Ukraine's artillery arm has quietly crossed a threshold with outsized consequences. By mid-October 2025, frontline units were operating roughly 120 Caesar 155mm truck-mounted howitzers, according to KNDS France. The raw number is attention-grabbing, but its real importance lies in what it says about how western-wheeled artillery has matured under fire. What started as a boutique capability seeded in small batches has become a fleet with mass, tempo, and a learning curve measured in thousands of rounds. In a war where drones saturate the sky and counter-battery radars punish hesitation, the emergence of a large, mobile, digitally networked gunline reshapes both daily tactics and the longer game of procurement and force design. Caesar's appeal has always been pragmatic a 52 caliber 155mm ordnance on a high-mobility truck, guided by digital fire control and inertial-slash-GPS navigation, optimized for the moments that matter most, rolling in, calculating data, firing accurately, and displacing before enemy sensors stitch together a firing solution. That framework is not exotic, but it is ruthlessly tuned for the reality of modern fires, where survivability is primarily a function of seconds on the clock and meters on the odometer. In Ukraine, this logic has been validated at scale. With about 120 tubes in the field, commanders can stack overlapping, counter-battery umbrellas, redistribute where across batteries, and maintain pressure without exhausting a handful of scarce assets. Mass converts anecdotes into data, data into doctrine. The platform's maturation path helps explain why the number matters. Early expeditionary deployments demonstrated the value of long-reach fires from a road-going chassis with modest sustainment demands. The Russo-Ukrainian War made that proof case unforgiving. Continuous adaptation, software refinements, protected cabins on select variants, and multiple truck integrations, has transformed the system from a clever concept into a resilient workhorse. Critically, the feedback loop is short, discrepancies found in the field can be resolved through software updates and maintenance practice changes that ripple quickly across a standardized fleet. When there are dozens of vehicles rather than a handful, update velocity becomes a weapon in its own right. The debate between tracked and wheeled artillery, often framed as protection and automation versus speed and cost, looks different when filtered through Ukraine's operating environment. Tracked systems like PZH-2000 or K-9 offer armor and high rates of sustained fire, but they carry heavier sustainment tails and are less forgiving on long road marches. Caesar tilts the trade space toward mobility and through-life economics. On roads, a trucked gun covers distance quickly, consumes fewer specialized parts, and can exploit civilian infrastructure for movement and maintenance. In a battle space defined by rapid sensor-to-shooter cycles and persistent overhead surveillance, the ability to relocate frequently and unpredictably can be as decisive as armor thickness. Counter-battery warfare is where the fleet-level shift becomes most visible. With sufficient density, Ukraine can choreograph fires that force the adversary to choose between immediate displacement, reducing their own rate of fire, or lingering and accepting rising risk. The effect compounds when paired with UAV spotting and electronic warfare that degrades enemy targeting. Instead of a few high-value guns sprinting between hides, a network mass of wheeled howitzers can maintain a rolling barrage of interdiction, interdict resupply routes at depth, and exploit short windows created by reconnaissance strike complexes. Over time, this imposes attacks on Russian artillery survivability, more guns must be held in reserve, more decoys deployed, more counter-battery ammunition expended to chase fleeting targets. Survivability is not only about movement, it is about predictability. Caesar's digital architecture and crew drills compress firing cycles to tens of seconds. Short dwell times deny adversary sensors the prolonged signatures they need, and frequent micro-relocations disrupt pattern-of-life analysis. The payoff is cumulative, fewer losses per mission means more missions completed per tube, which in turn produces a richer record of reliability data, which then refines maintenance intervals and spare part provisioning.
The result is a positive feedback loop in which operational practice improves sustainment efficiency and sustainment efficiency enables higher operational tempo. Economics sit close to the surface. The value proposition for wheeled 155mm guns is as much about cost per effect as it is about sticker price. Commercially derived truck components, simplified maintenance, and the ability to self-deploy over long distances bring daily operating costs down, especially when units are racking up road mileage between firing points. In a high attrition, high tempo war, that delta compounds. A gun that can be kept in a fight with fewer specialized vehicles and less downtime yields more salvos per dollar, assuming the ammunition pipeline keeps pace. This is why Ukraine scale is a procurement signal, it suggests the model is not only tactically viable but economically sustainable when multiplied across brigades. Industrial teaming is accelerating the system's relevance for broader markets. KNDS France's collaboration with Leonardo DRS to package a U.S. integrated variant on a domestic tactical truck is emblematic of how battlefield lessons translate into programs of record. Local integration matters for logistics, training, and political buy-in, it also accelerates iterative improvement cycles by bringing software, spares, and engineering support closer to end-users. For allies evaluating artillery recapitalization, a combat-proven, mobile platform with a demonstrated path to domestic integration checks boxes that go beyond range tables and rate-of-fire charts. It aligns with doctrine that prizes dispersion, precision, and rapid kill chains over static gun parks and crew-heavy rituals. None of this obviates the hard problems of ammunition supply and targeting. A 120-gun fleet is only as effective as the shells and fuses it receives and the sensors that assign valid targets. Here, too, scale helps. Standardization across batteries simplifies training for precision munitions, makes digital fire control updates more impactful, and creates predictable demand signals for industry. The same mass that improves counter-battery coverage also justifies investments in smarter fuses, longer-range projectiles, and more robust C2 links. As the fleet grows, incremental improvements in munitions and software yield outsized effects, because there are more systems ready to exploit them on any given day. For the adversary, this shift imposes a different calculus. Drone feeds that once found a handful of high-value guns now face a moving mosaic of look-alike trucks that appear, fire, and vanish. Counter-battery radars that cue on muzzle flashes must contend with shorter cycles and greater dispersion. Logistics hubs and transit nodes are held at risk deeper and more persistently, complicating resupply rhythms. The counter to mobility is often more ISR and faster kill chains, but that raises the resource burden and forces trade-offs elsewhere. In effect, a scaled fleet of agile howitzers dilutes the efficiency of enemy targeting while concentrating the efficiency of one's own. The strategic message is straightforward. Ukraine's experience demonstrates that a lean, digitally driven, shoot-and-scoot artillery concept not only survives in a drone-dense, radar-swept battle space, it scales. That scaling converts tactical virtues into operational leverage and turns operational leverage into industrial momentum. For planners, the lesson is to pair such fleets with resilient communications, abundant munitions, and agile sustainment. For industry, it is a prompt to prioritize software velocity, modular protection options, and logistics footprints that fit the real world rather than the range brochure. For allies, it validates a procurement path that balances performance with availability and survivability with cost over time. What began as a modest infusion of truck-mounted guns has matured into a fleet capable of reshaping the daily geometry of the front. The move from boutique to mass does not merely add firepower, it changes how long-range fires are scheduled, how adversaries behave, and how the next round of artillery programs will be written. Ukraine's 120 Caesars are, in that sense, not just weapons on wheels, they are evidence that mobility, software, and disciplined simplicity can outpace heavier, slower, more expensive answers when the battlefield punishes delay.